So, Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Malakiyam. Um, big Shalom to the family, Danya Allah Dawid, it's quiet. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, you know. Um, tonight's study, we want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. Rock a thumb to the family, Kwam Yasha Allah. Um, tonight's study is the first commandment from the perspective that uh, essentially put on me through the teachings I've seen from the elders and, and from brethren and from life's experiences and from the scriptures, right? We get our understanding through thy precepts, God. Right? So since we get our, our understanding through thy precepts and we hate every false way, we're going to go into the scriptures today in regards to the first commandment and we're gonna to touch on a few things, okay? So um, with that, we just wanna say all praises and uh, with no further ado, we're gonna get started on today's Shabbat class. Um, we're gonna open up with a few scriptures and I'll get some people to pull it. Guys, make sure you read loud because uh, I'm recording this and we will release this video for the uh, rest of the family that's not here today and the extended family on YouTube from all our subscribers and all the family that tune in and, and get fed. Um, we're supposed to feed the flock. Con? Con. All right, Con. 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 All right. So you'll need your 1611s or your uh, KJVs, your Apocryphas. You want to have your phones, have a pen, have a, have a paper and a notepad because uh, we will be taking notes and um, you can break this down to other people as well. Con? So... Let's no further ado, let's get into it. I got my drink right here. Let me take a sip and we'll get started. Another Mike D exclusive. I recommend lime water to everybody. Man, lime water is good. All right, hallelujah. All right, so today. Turn this volume down a little bit, a little bit of background music. All right, all right. Um, one of you three strong readers, let's open up tonight with, uh, mm, let's open up with Malachi 3 and 16. Malachi 3 and 16. God. So while one of you is getting that, the other one get Micah 2 and 12. I got the Micah 2 and 12, do you want me to start it? Or if you don't, it's all good. Um, Let's hold that. We'll do that one second, Pop. Okay. Um, I'm Malachi. Okay. Yep, 3, 16. And then Micah 2 and 12 um, when we're ready. Book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 16. Bring it out. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. And that thou and that thought upon his name. Con. So there's a lot that's said in there, <clears throat> and a lot of it's actually tangible and real. Um, it's not in theory, it's actually real, physical, sustainable, tangible manifestations of this scripture. Let's read it again and go slow, and as you read it, I will break it down. Go ahead. Malachi 3 and 16. Mm-hmm. Then they that feared the Lord. Hold it there. So then they that feared the Lord. So that's the first thing. We know Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 is uh, the conclusion of the whole matter is fear Yahweh and keep his commandments, right? And today's class is the first commandment. So Malachi 3.16 says, they that feared the Lord. Go ahead. Spake often one to another. Now hold it right there. So... You know, Akiyam speak to each other on the phone for hours, text each other. There's a lot of different communication between Akiyam. They'll either um, text each other, group texts, indiv individual texts, group chats, um, go online, comment boards. I mean, it goes on and on and on, right? It's because all of us fear the Lord. Go ahead. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. Mm. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. Hold and it that there. Thought. Hold it there. So twice it's it's reiterating, it's clarifying and being clear 
that those that fear the Lord are doing these things. So some people say, I have fear of the Lord, but they may not be doing this. This is the tangible manifestation of those that fear the Lord. They're sharing, right? Now, <clears throat> when we're going into this first commandment, we're going to we're gonna realize that the first commandment is put nothing above the Lord thy God. Con? Uh -huh. All right. So if you put nothing above the Lord thy God and you fear him and keep his commandments, shouldn't you be communicating often, it says. It says that they that feared the Lord spake often one to another and the Lord hearkened. So it's not just vain uh, vain opinions and vain jangling. It's speaking the oracles. Con, uh, uh, the priest lip keeps knowledge. It's all of these things. That's what we're speaking often one to another, encouraging, edifying each other in the fear of the Lord. And then it says, and he heard it. And it says, the Lord hearkened. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. So these things are being documented. Does everyone get it so far? Right. Uh, uh. And that thought upon his name. What is his name? His name is righteousness. Con? Uh. All right. He's a he's our salvation. Even Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, you know, their names have meanings. Meanings. He exists. You know, there's people that don't believe in God. And then um Yahweh Shai is, is his salvation. So we believe on that salvation. So it says, and they that thought upon his name. So we know that salvation in his name is in the scriptures. So we go into the scriptures and we learn what his name means, what it means to be in his name. Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, Bahashim. Khan? Uh, All right, good one. Uh, so we brought that out because when you're keeping that first commandment, these precepts mean a lot more to you. Uh, Mijo, uh, Daniel Allah, Micah 2 and 12, please. About your shot. Book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 12. Mm -hmm. I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will, put them, I will put them together as the sheep of, of Basra as the flock in the midst of their fold they shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men hallelujah, hey, hallelujah. so, so as yeah. as the first verse that we brought out malachi 3 16 it says they're talking amongst each other right it uh, says that that you know often often they speak amongst each other and then in here in micah 2 12 the most high says I will surely assemble, O Jacob. And Jacob is the seed of the 12 tribes scattered abroad. It says, all of thee, I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. So there's a remnant of Israel that he's focusing on, that he's gathering together. He says, I will put them together as sheep. So sheep, when they come together, they eat together, don't they? Yeah. Uh, so we're eating together the word of Yahweh, and we're in safety together under one shepherd, which is Yahweh Shai, who is under Yahweh. So we, as we start to read these scriptures and we start to see how the language works, we start to realize that we're a part of something very precious because in Micah 2.12, first words are, I will surely. What does the word surely mean? I guaranteed. Hmm. What's the precept to that? His word don't come back. Boy. Time. So all through the Bible, it's backing itself up. He says, I will surely assembly, O Jacob. <laughs> I will surely, he says it twice, gather the remnant of Yasha Allah. Jacob, Israel, Yasha Allah, all the same thing. He's not saying he's going to gather everybody. He's just going to gather the remnant of Yasha Allah. So doesn't that make us even more precious? Con. And then it says, I will put them together as the sheep of Basra. So he's giving you a picture, you know, and, uh, and, and I don't know, I've never been to Basra in regards to this, to see the sheep of Basra, but, you know, it says that the um, children of Israel are like the sands of the, of the, um, Con. Pull that real quick. Let's get that correct. I don't want to butcher the script as uh, us as Israelites pulling scripture after scripture sometimes we get we start quoting it and we want to make sure we quote it right so 
the children of Israel are as the sands, and then and then it'll say it. I'm almost positive it's going to say. Um, Got it. All right, pull that out. Hosea one and ten. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Con. So as we wake up in our captivity, as it says in Baruch, we will think upon his name as it said in, um, in Malachi, as you read, um, and in that remnant is, a, you know, is a small, but we are a large amount of people that can't be uh, numbered. So imagine, you know, you see some sheep and it's just for as far as the eye can see over the mountain, there's just sheep, boom, boom, boom. Um, but, you know, again, he's bringing a remnant of Israel and he says, as the flock in the midst of their fold, as a flock in the midst of their fold, they shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. So Yahweh is doing all these things. Um, he's uh, possessing our, our our minds with the spirit and he's filling our heart and, and, he's, and he's downloading in these days and pulling scriptures out and we can identify with them. And um, we become this people that he's prophesied that the prophets, Micah's a prophet, right? Uh, Malachi's a prophet. So they prophesied that this stuff was happening and it's happening. We're coming together in these last days and we're um, doing everything the scripture says. All right, outstanding. Let's go ahead and get one of you, um, get Colossians 2 and 8. Colossians 2 and 8. And then one of you hold Exodus 32 and 33. So that's Exodus chapter 32 oh, and verse the last one again. That will be Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Okay. And then the one after that? And that's going to be Exodus chapter 32, verse 33. Uh, you went out for a sec, but I got Colossians 2 and 8. Okay, Con, when you're ready, you can pull that out. All right. Book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Be word. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Rudiments of the world, which means you know, like the going okay. of man. So, so <clears throat> as oh, we God. were reading, we read that there is a beautiful. Hold on, one quick second. Let me uh, close that out. There's something pop up on my screen. Um, so it says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. What would you call philosophy in the world today? Uh, like philosophy, like opinion on opinion. Opinion, that's one. That's good. Um, should it be your understanding? Okay, understanding. So let me give you an example example of philosophies. Okay, so in the Greek captivity, they were known for great philosophers, they would call them, and they would write their opinions down, like you said, and they'd be philosophizing, or philo philos phil they would give their philosophy on life. So someone might believe that, um, like, um, you would have... Uh, Arist Aristotle, uh, Socrates. You ever heard of those names in school? These these were called the great thinkers of the of the old Greek and Roman days. And um, you might have somebody now like a Tony Robbins. Um, he has all these his own belief system. Um, there's people you buy their tapes, you listen to them, and they're trying to tell you how to live your life. So oh, yeah. Yeah, so it says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So the vain, it means that it's going to come to naught, and the deceit is a lie. So these are devils that the Bible speaks of, okay? That they're they're promoting and projecting something other than thus say Yahweh. 
Now, if they're promoting something that lines up with the scripture, but they're just bringing it a little bit different, uh, then so be it. You know, you can go back to the scriptures. Like, for instance, uh, someone says, uh, um, what goes around comes around. You ever heard that before? Yeah, yeah I've heard that. What scripture in the Bible would back that up? You reap what you, you sow. sow. Right. So some sometimes they're just biting and taking from, you know, the, the truth in the Bible. But then other times they're just out the window with their garbage. They're, you know, they got a little philosophy out there. What goes on in yeah. Vegas stays, stays in Vegas. Vegas. And Who that's that devils. <laughs> Let's just answer the question clearly. Um, yeah. And I bring that up because they're bold. They put that on the commercials. And then you got people with a philosophy that if you wear a mask, you're gonna you're gonna save yourself from the coronavirus when yeah, it's Yahweh yeah. who will decide whether or not you get the coronavirus. Con? Con. So that would be vain deceit. They're deceiving you. That mask isn't gonna save you from a coronavirus if Yahweh wants you to get it. So it says, Colossians 2 and 8, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Now, the Con. law, statutes, and commandments are our doctrine. So anything that's contrary to that is something that we rebuke and, and uh, we have nothing to do with. After the traditions of men, what is a tradition of men? Churches, like pagan holidays. Perfect. Hey, I couldn't have said a better answer. Um, uh, religions, um, you know, the things they do in their religions, that's the tradition of men. Even Christ dealt with that when he used to tell the Pharisees, you know, the traditions of men, but you guys aren't keeping these commands. It says, yeah. after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Christ is the word. Con, uh, pertaining sure. to John 1 and 1. Yeah, Christ is the word. Con. Right, and he comes in the volume of the? The book. Con. So, so for us to get into this first commandment, we got to realize that to they put nothing above the Lord, you have to understand that there's things that are trying to sneak in. So beware, that's why we brought Colossians 2 and 8 out, beware lest any man spoil you through vain philosophy and all this deceit. So, and they'll do that. Oh, you don't have to keep the commands. You see what I'm saying? And that will spoil you. Now you're breaking the commands. What comes, what does your how will bring when you break the commands? Yeah. Con. Yep, con. The wages of sin is what uh, Daniel Allah just said, death. Con? Con. So outstanding. So you guys are getting proper understanding. So I had some notes here. Uh, so we put faith in the word, laws, commands, statutes, and, and that's our outline. But the world is attacking our heritage, right? Because the laws, statutes, and commandments are our heritage, right? Con. So they might not come out blatantly and just say, hey, I'm attacking your heritage. They'll just say, hey, why don't you keep Easter? Hey, why don't you just celebrate Halloween with us? You know what I mean? All like mom said, all them pagan holidays. Um, yeah. And they're really, who are they really attacking? They're attacking your father, not me, your Abba Nawa, Khan. Because they're undermining him, just like Eve in the, uh, the garden. Oh, you can eat that. You shall not surely die. Exactly. So, but you will. The wages of sin is death, as Daniel Allah said. So you got to stay hot. Don't get cold. Don't get lukewarm. Stay hot. Hate anything that's going against the Abba now. Because Abba told us straight up, our father told us, Yahweh, if you break these commands, uh, that's death. And we saw the trail of tears the other night. We saw what happened to our our brothers and we know what happened in Deuteronomy 28 68 we know all these different things and um you know that's why the world was handed over to wickedness so we have to really be real about the first commandment all right who has that exodus 32 and 33 me bring it out man thanks yeah book of exodus chapter 32 verse 33 mm -hmm. and the lord said unto moses whosoever hath sinned against me him will I blot out of my book. Nice. I don't like I don't like that, man. But that's what it is. Read it again. And the Lord said unto Moses, 
whosoever had sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Now, Dang. it's real. So we have to fear the Lord. And that's the first thing, fear the Lord and keep his commandments. So he's not playing. So some of us, you know, like myself, you know, I can get real hot about, you know, being out of order, disrespecting, undermining and all that, because I don't want anybody blotted out. Okay. It's got to be done the right way. And I'm held responsible. Same with Hamashiach. He was held so responsible that he actually went to the cross and, um, and, and paid a, a severe price for the sins of Israel. So we need to understand that's how serious it is to put the Lord first, right? The first commandment. And the Lord said unto Moshe, who the most high allocated, who have the most high uh, ordained and rose up to be someone as a savior. There's many saviors in the Bible. There's a Mashiach, there was Moshe, the prophets who told you what to do to avoid death. Um, you know, yeah. these people were all saviors. Uh, even um, heathens have been used. You know, if the Most High wants to use a heathen, you know what? What would have happened to Jonah when he got thrown out of the ship if that whale didn't swallow him? He would have drowned out in the ocean, Khan. He would have, yeah, Khan. So the Most High has used so many things to help us. And uh, it's important because who, who, whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. But Yahweh shows so much mercy, even when we do sin against them, he sends his son and gives us space to repent. Con. So we're so grateful. All right, let's get Matthew uh, chapter 23, and we're going to read verses 36 through 40. And while you're grabbing that, let's get somebody to get Con. Um, the water. Let's get someone to get Revelations chapter 1, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And Meiji, um, let's, um, or Shaquat, let's see if you can start pulling scripts to me, to get you, the best way to get you used to it is to get you to do it. The boy, um, your cousins will help you too. We won't give you a bunch. We'll give you like two or three today. So Matthew 23 and 40, right? It's going to be Matthew 22 verses 36 through 40. And then Revelation what? And that's going to be Rev 1 verse 6. All right. We have Revelations. All right. Um, hold the Revelations. Let's get to Matthew first. I got it. All right. We're ready. Book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 36 through 40. Mm -hmm. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Hold it there. So when somebody asked Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, which is the great commandment in the law? Hamashiach didn't have to go, uh, hmm, let me think. There's a whole lot of there's 613. Let me try to put this together. He said, Yahweh Shai said unto him. Now say it. Uh, Bring it out. Thy, yep. And with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Okay. So this thing has a depth to it. So it says, Amashi, Yahweh Shai said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord, thy power with all thy heart with all thy soul and with all thy mind. How do we love? What what verse in the Bible tells us how to love the Lord? It's in John. I love you, the Lord, you fear God, keep, fear his, God commandment. and keep his commandments. Yep. Commandments. Okay, let's get that verse. Okay. All right. Because through like precepts, we get understanding, not through our opinions, right? Uh. All right, so let's get the precept. I'm getting it. Mm -hmm. And 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 the first Maybe commandment, has... the first commandment will always be something that will affect every other commandment. All right, this is Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, verse thirteen. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And with all thy mind, how do we love? What, what verse in the Bible tells us how to love the Lord? Fear. Keep the commandments. 
Right, because because uh, Yahweh Shai said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord, thy God. So okay, how do we love it. the Lord thy God? It's got, it says right here, John chapter 14, verse 15. Mm -hmm. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Very clear, right? Yeah, very simple too. Con. And that's what we need. Uh, there's a simplicity in Christ. And look at when, when Christ was asked the question, he said, Hamashiach said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart. And then you just precepted, Loving the Lord is keeping his commandments. And with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So that means you have to fill your mind with the law. Con? Con. Right. Con. And then it says, and with all thy soul. The soul is bigger than the body. It's bigger than the mind. Now, watch this. Your soul is something we're going to touch on real fast. Uh, somebody pulled this up. Fear him who can kill the soul. Grab that. You want me to finish off on this, Matthew? No, we want you to hold it still. Oh, okay, okay. We will. We will, though. All right. Yeah, I'll hold it. Okay, we're just going to slow roast how, how important this is here. All right, Shaqua, good to see you. Good to see you getting your uh, feet wet, me <laughs> He's pulling this one? Yeah. Book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 28. Gone. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. On. On. So when Yahweh Shai went to the cross, he obviously didn't fear that uh, Pontius Pilate and the Jews could kill his body, but he feared his father who could kill his soul. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. so to keep this first commandment, you can't even be scared of death, can you? No. We're not going to say that it's not going to trouble us because even Yahweh Shai. Mo, you know, the most powerful man that ever walked the planet. He That's even coward. said, hey, if this, yeah, Khan, he said, we'll um, thrown in the lake of fire. He says, fear, fear the one that can kill the soul. And that is the most high. So that helps us keep that first commandment because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And some things are just uh, at a certain level but when you're talking about the most high that's above everything above our pay grade above our understanding we only uh, matter of fact pull this precept um, his ways are not our ways pull that and what we're doing is trading in our ways because you know we've uh, been disconnected from our heritage discontinued from our heritage and now we have to learn the ways of Yahweh Bosh Shem Yahweh Shai Khan all right, somebody's get somebody pulling what I asked for. It's isn't it for my thoughts or not your thoughts or no? That's it. That's it. Okay. Isaiah chapter fifty-eight, verse not. I mean, verse eight mm -hmm. and nine. Mm -hmm. It says, "For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your your ways my ways." Hold it there. The Hold it there. Okay, so watch this. Say it, the Lord. Now, you might be trying to explain something to somebody, but they can't get it because they're stuck thinking their ways. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, so that's why when we try to explain somebody this truth, they don't receive it because they're stuck in their own understanding. What does the scripture say? Lean not unto your own understanding. Uh, but, through, but through thy precepts, we get what? Understanding. understanding. So whatever the precepts say, whatever the scriptures say, which is the word of God, which all authority was given to Yahweh Shai, all these things line up. And that's how we keep this first commandment. Khan is by uh, fearing Yahweh and doing exactly what he says to a T. We have a Passover coming up and we're not going to fudge around with it. We're going to do it the way he said to do it. Khan? Uh -huh. 
All right, so go ahead and pick up on that Matthew 22, 36, and 40, and go ahead and pick it up from the top, Mijo. Okay. I got it. Book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 36 through 40. Mm -hmm. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Mm -hmm. Verse 38. Hold it, hold it real quick. So okay. there's nothing that's not given. That's every part of you. So there's no holding back. So let's say, you know, you you you, you know that I, I teach classes, I street preach, I study. I can't be half-assing it, slock you for the language, but we all know what that means, right? Yeah. Even on the basketball court, if you're trying to win a championship, that's not the day you want to not hustle back on defense. That's not yeah. the day you don't want to box out. That's not the day you don't want to follow your shot. That's not the day you don't want to slide your feet and get in front of your opponent. You understand? Uh -huh. So same thing with serving Yahweh. He's saying with all thy heart. How about a wife? If she's going to serve Yahweh, then she better come 100% submissive, not just when she feels like it, Con. Uh -huh. and, and just like a husband, <laughs> if, he, if the Most High is going to give him a wife, then he better submit all the way under Yahweh Otherwise, he's going to have problems in that relationship, and Yahweh's going to allow it. Con? Con. Huh. All right. Keep going. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Verse 38. This is the first and great commandment. Mm -hmm. Verse 39. And the second is like unto you, unto it, Slakia. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ooh, now hold it there. So he says, and the second is like unto it. It's like the first one. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. How come it's like it? Because you love Yahweh by loving your brother, by loving your sister, by loving your nation, by loving your mishpika. You should be kwam yasha Allah. It shouldn't be, oh, I got some time to put some work in for the nation. No, you live and die for your nation as Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Did Hamashiach give all his heart, all his mind, all his body? Yep. All right, so this is why this class is so important because don't play with it. He don't want lukewarm, he wants you hot. He wants you doing what you're supposed to do. Just like um, when you meet a woman or a woman meets a man, you know, you give your whole heart and you have a shy to your, to your wife and to your husband. You don't have um, to where you don't regard her needs or, uh, she doesn't regard uh, your authority. Everything has to be respected because the minute we stop doing that, you're gonna see a problem in that. So it says, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So I love myself, so I'm not gonna starve myself. I'll fast because fasting is a righteous thing. So if I have a, a Israelite neighbor next to me and he's starving, I can't let him starve if I have food. So the whole point of this thing is to love thyself. Um, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So verse forty. Verse forty. On these two, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, anybody know what that means? Mm, I, Read it one more time. Okay. Verse forty. It says, "On these two commandments." Hang all the law and the prophets. You want me to break that down? Yeah, I can give uh, us some understanding on it, please. Okay. Anybody have anything to offer before I start? I'll give you a clue. What is today? Shabbat. Shabbat. Whose commandment is that? Most high. Most high that he gave us. So it says, on these two commandments, and the first one was love thy 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 uh thy god with all thy heart so if you love thy god with all the heart what was the precept of that if you love me keep my commandments hey, so wouldn't the shabbat be hanging on the first commandment yeah so it says on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets now what did the prophets say 
The prophet said that Hamashiach would come and die for the nation of Israel. Khan? Khan. Doesn't that, isn't that fall into category number two? Love thy brother like you love thyself? Khan. Yeah. Are you starting to understand how all this works together and, and everything is, is under these two uh, things? Like for instance, thou shall not steal. Stealing from thy neighbor, that's not loving your neighbor as thyself, is it? Let's say you're greedy. Let's say you're greedy, right? Passover's coming up and your neighbor has a couple of lambs and you don't. And you steal one of his lambs. Whoa. Exactly. So you don't treat your brother like that. You wouldn't want you wouldn't want your brother to steal from you. It says thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So so even the law of thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, every other commandment lines up with loving Yahweh and loving thy brothers and sisters. Khan? Uh, all right, so it's not difficult. We just have to just line it up and it'll all fall in place. Kind of like, uh, you know how we play Connect Four? And when you drop the little thing down, and if you drop them all down right, you get four in a row and you win the game. Can I get a Kwame Yashaala? Come on. What you need to be pushed for? You a big boy. <laughs> 